Imagine being able to buy renewable energy from the roof next door. In the Park Slope neighborhood of Brooklyn, a network of homes and businesses is participating in a pilot program that has the potential to disrupt the energy industry. I think we have six houses on this side of the street. We're one of the most solar power uh, intense blocks in Brooklyn. Brooklyn Microgrid is a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace where members buy and sell locally generated renewable energy to each other using blockchain technology. It's Match.com for energy, right? You have, you have someone that has energy that they want to sell, and you have someone that has ener or they, energy that they want to buy that may be cleaner and locally produced. And the Brooklyn Microgrid just brings those two parties together. The result? A greener, more reliable, and more resilient grid and quite possibly the future of energy consumption. Hurricane Sandy has been waging a war. Look at these waves out here. Look at that surf. We lost a transformer. Everybody's OK. In 2012, Hurricane Sandy devastated many neighborhoods throughout New York City. The force too much for the city's power grid. Floodwater shorting out this Con Ed substation. Three quarters of a million New Yorkers lost electricity. I didn't appreciate the importance of resilience until well after Sandy was done with. I didn't realize the impact, people not having food in New York City in the 2000s. For weeks, this was going on, and we didn't really understand the depth of this crisis. Now we understand. We've seen in recent years uh, hurricanes, storms, grid failures. Um, resiliency, this ability to, uh, you know, overcome events that may take down a larger grid is a huge benefit of the Brooklyn Microgrid. Here's how Brooklyn Microgrid works. Residents and small business owners participate in the local energy marketplace as either prosumers, people with solar panels on their rooftops, or as consumers, people who want to purchase their excess solar energy. Prosumers have a Brooklyn Microgrid smart meter system installed, which gathers and records energy data for use within the marketplace. Participants access the marketplace on the Brooklyn Microgrid mobile app. Through blockchain technology specifically developed for energy transactions, prosumers can then sell their surplus solar energy to consumers who bid on it via auction, or they can choose to continue to net meter with the local utility Con Edison. Some of the blackouts that have happened here in New York recently could have definitely benefited from having a microgrid that could separate and pull off a big chunk of load from the network so that it didn't overload, overheat, and cause a blackout or a brownout. Brownout's becoming like a fact of life here in Brooklyn. This is a serious problem. The microgrid has the ability to operate with the larger utility. During emergency situations, it can island itself off, operating autonomously without the use of the local utilities grid. So the interest here was really in developing a resilient segment of Brooklyn that could separate uh, from the grid itself and run on its own power. Participants say the environmental benefits are also a big draw. Renewable energy is important to me because we need to make this energy transition uh, away from traditional uh, fossil fuels. I have grandchildren and they need a world to inherit. And they're not gonna have a world to inherit if we don't deal with climate change in a serious way. This is a motivated community. They had a really strong interest in driving that market value for local renewables. They want their dollars to be for real green kilowatt hours being produced where they live because this is the air their kids breathe. This is the community that they live in. They'd rather be paying Martha across the street to produce electricity uh, than they would a retailer in Montana that doesn't need the environmental benefits of a renewable plant in the middle of nowhere. But it says I've saved 69,022 pounds of carbon dioxide since I put this in. Roughly 70,000 pounds of carbon dioxide that didn't go into the atmosphere because of uh, the solar panels. From the engineering viewpoint, it's a totally viable idea, both technically and economically. Uh, because what you just described, it's nothing else but what Uber and Lyft did 10 years ago in the transportation sector. The same thing is going to happen here. The only difference is that now we have blockchain, which is a miracle enabler of these technologies that can help us to organize these transactions. 
So this project is really um, meant to give choice. I think today, many people are just stuck with the electricity that comes off of the network that they're on. Most people these days embrace the idea of local. They embrace the idea of community. Um, and it's, it's often a shock to people that energy can be something that's local. I mean, at some point in the future, you will be able to buy electricity from the person that produces the electricity and not have to have a third party sell you energy that they've bought from somebody else. The big problem with the microgrid now is not necessarily the concept or the implementation, it's the permission from uh, the powers that be. At this point, it's just happening in a test environment here in Brooklyn uh, because there is no way at this point uh, in Brooklyn for somebody to buy electricity from their neighbor. There's a regulatory shift that has to happen in order for that to be enabled in Brooklyn. The technology exists. What we're waiting for is regulation to catch up with technology. I think as soon as this barrier is removed from their way, they can move on pretty quickly because they do have a technology that is operational. They do have demonstration studies here in New York, and I do believe in their potential to succeed. But it's not only one particular company who is going to win from this, it's the whole society. I think the consumers are going to drive this change. Um, I think that eventually the regulators will capitulate to the consumers that are saying, look, we want renewables. For BMG's participants, their focus is on petitioning for change. I'd certainly like to see this effort go to fruition, ready for the next storm, the next brownout, the next whatever. For now, this Brooklyn neighborhood is offering a glimpse into how you may soon generate and consume electricity. I'd say we're probably about five, seven years maybe. It's pretty fast.